Since it's Jurassic June, I've decided to do a video showing the significant differences between Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park novel and Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park movie. There's actually quite a few, so here we go. One of the first big significant differences is actually that of the sick Triceratops. Because it's not a Triceratops, it's a Stegosaurus. I think Spielberg changed this because he felt Triceratops was more a popular animal than Stegosaurus. But it is a significant difference from that of its novel counterpart. Another difference, although not that significant, is the age difference between Tim and Lex Murphy. In the movie, Lex is the older of the two siblings, but in Crichton's novel, Tim is actually older. The reason in between this and the movie is I think Spielberg just wanted Lex to be older, so it was more believable that she was competent in hacking the Jurassic Park mainframe. In Spielberg's movie, the most iconic dinosaur is the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but in the actual novel, there's two Rexes, the adult and the juvenile. I'm guessing the juvenile T-Rex was dropped for budgetary concerns. That said though, Kenner got the idea of actually creating the juvenile for the Jurassic Park figure line, and as a result, we actually got a fairly cool budget T-Rex for that line. Dinosaurs on the mainland. Yes, in Crichton's novel, dinosaurs actually make it to the mainland. In fact, the book opens up with the attack on an infant by some compass octatus, which is one of the mitigating factors of the safety check for Jurassic Park. And if the prospect of compies attacking people is bad enough, by the end of the novel, a number of raptors have made it aboard a ship that is heading for the mainland. I think Spielberg was right to drop this though, as it's a whole other plot line and leads into a whole other series of events that would be better tackled in a whole other movie. Another set piece that was abandoned for the movie was the Avery. Yes, as Grant and the kids make their way across Jurassic Park, they find themselves entering an Avery filled with pterodactyls. This is an incredibly tense scene in the book, but again, I think for budgetary reasons, Spielberg decided to axe it. However, this idea would turn up in Joe Johnson's Jurassic Park sequel, Jurassic Park 3. Another set piece from the novel featuring Grant and the kids was that of the T-Rex stalking them along the riverbank. This would have been an incredibly exciting scene where the Rex would follow our heroes in a boat up the river and only be distracted by the juvenile T-Rex pilfering its kill. I am sure the reason this was dropped was purely for budget concerns. That said, in a lot of the making of material, you can see concept art for this scene, which does make me think Spielberg did consider actually filming this part of the book. Another major change from the novel to the movie was the death of Dennis Nedry. It was far more graphic and also featured Dilophosaurus that were more akin to their more paleo-accurate size. Rather than just being spat at and an off-screen kill, we see Nedry be disemboweled and then have his skull crushed at the jaws of the Dilophosaurus. Suffice to say, Spielberg water this down as not to endanger his PG rating and isolate the younger target audience. Speaking of deaths, that's another area where the novel and movie differs significantly. There is a big change up of the fates of a lot of the characters. First off, John Hammond dies. Yes, John Hammond near the end of the book trips, falls down a hill and is eaten alive by compies. Another character who dies in the novel but survives the movie is that of Henry Wu. He's actually killed by velociraptors as they lay siege to the command center of Jurassic Park. But it's not all doom and gloom. Two characters who actually die in the movie survive the novel. First off, Robert Muldoon actually survives all the way to the end of the book and becomes a fairly significant character in the later part of the plot. Ironically, He's resurrected in the Topps comics also to show how popular the character was back in the day. Another character, surprisingly enough, who survives is that of Donald Gennaro. While in the movie, he's killed while cowering in the toilet. Gennaro is actually a fairly proactive character and does some heroic things in the novel. The character of Gennaro in the movie is actually based off a character from the novel of Ed Regis, a slimy and highly dislikable character 
who meets his end at the teeth of the juvenile T-Rex. Another character death was that of Ian Malcolm. Malcolm actually dies from injuries sustained during the T-Rex attack. Crichton later realised Malcolm was a popular character and actually retconned this death for his follow-up novel The Lost World Jurassic Park. However, the way he explained this I think was a bit silly. In the novel it states the newspapers greatly exaggerated Malcolm's death, which if you ask me was one of the biggest deus ex machinas there ever was put to a novel. And lastly, while the movie ends with a very optimistic feeling, the novel does not. It ends with the Costa Rican government coming in and firebombing the island, ostensibly killing all the species on it and making sure no one knows about the existence of Jurassic Park. So guys, that was my differences between the Jurassic Park movie and novel. If I missed any big ones, let me know in the comments below. And what did you think? Would you have liked to have seen certain scenes from the novel feature in the movie? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Take care. Bye now.